Good afternoon and we are at JW Marriott Calcutta. There's something going on as food diplomacy. This is Jamie Dragon, Chef J. And they are both behind this interesting concept. Now, as usual, I'm unable to understand what is going on. And I need something in a layman's language. Tell me something about it. What is this thing? Okay, well maybe I'll start off. Please. Um, so Jamie Dragon, uh, director of the American Center. Um, we are the, uh, I guess, the brainchild of the project. It's food diplomacy, a recipe for entrepreneurship. Um, and so the word I'll choose to focus on is the entrepreneurship word, um, because that's uh, the U.S. consulate in Calcutta and the U.S. government, our mission in India. Entrepreneurship is one of our big themes. Um, and we actually do a lot of work. We do programs on social entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. uh, women's entrepreneurship, tech, um, you know, our uh, American Center in New Delhi is home now to the Nexus Incubator. Um, so we're doing a lot of things because we want to promote entrepreneurship to promote a more prosperous India. Uh, so this will be some uh, kind of a congress or a, a ongoing seminar or a project to promote food entrepreneurship or to support the existing ecosystem or to teach them the best practices or all of it. How's yeah, it like? so just to tie that off, so I mean, we've done all these other kind of traditional areas of entrepreneurship, but we all like to eat, right? Um, and yes. So that was our idea was, hey, we've, we've already done a lot of the other areas. Why not food? We know lots of people um, like food kind of here. Um, and so we wanted to help promote and grow the food entrepreneurship ecosystem. So we invited people that are established but not yet uh, that have room to grow and we brought in Jay Ducote from Louisiana and um, one other chef from the state of Texas, um, Tiffany uh, Derry, and they did a two-day workshop and today we're putting it together with um, other people in the industry. Uh, right now it's just kind of a pilot project. It seems like it's going really well, a lot of energy, people are excited, so um, I can't sit here and tell you that I uh, invite you to the next Shelly. U.S. General, Council General Food Diplomacy Part 2, but um, it's going really well. What do you Lovely. Think? Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here, and it's my first time in, in Calcutta, and it's just been tremendous. The, the street food has been awesome. The food that I've gotten at all the events has been great. We're at the JW Marriott right now, and the food here is just tremendous uh, that we're getting for lunch today. Uh, but I helped host uh, two days of culinary entrepreneurship workshops. Uh, and so we had a little over 20 participants from around India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal who really are, are on that entrepreneurial journey. And, uh, and I got to come in from America and kind of tell my story and help connect the dots with that. And we really saw so much passion and so much energy in the food space that, that people love working with food and that feeling is, is the same across the globe, that anywhere in the world we get people that are super passionate about food and really care where their food is coming from. And we talked about all sorts of things in the food entrepreneurship world and branding and social media and, and development of those brands and, and funding for your business. But one of the things that we all really had in common was the same care for a lot of the causes out there, sustainable agriculture and reducing food waste and figuring out the supply chain so that we can work directly with farmers and that we can present our customers with the best food possible and talking about innovation in the food world. And those things, those issues are the same issues that we're facing back in America as well. And so coming halfway across the world and finding that everybody really is, is worried about the same sorts of things, that, that we have those same causes in mind, it's really actually eye-opening to me and, and just it's a cause for celebration to say that we really this is a global thing that we we're all in together and as much as we all love food together we all are passionate and care about the issues in the food world as well do you find any similarity between the food scenario here and in america the uh, yeah there, there are definitely similarities between the, the apart from the items the items would vary that you understand but the, the, so the items will vary, but so America is such a melting pot that we can we can find a lot of foods in a lot of places. But there were certainly foods that I've had for the first time ever uh -huh. here. Uh, the caddy roll that I got uh, on the streets over by New Market, first time I've ever had one of those, and it was tremendous. Probably my favorite thing that I've eaten so far, and it's just simple street food, and uh, and I loved it. Uh, but you know there are similarities as well. There there's there's similar ingredients that the whole world uses, 
that we just cook in different ways or we spice with different seasonings or the way that we combine those flavors and, and create something new. Uh, it's, it's always fun to see that. Now, I love traveling and I love exploring the world through my taste buds and, and through my stomach. And uh, this has been one of the best places ever for that. Now, tell me something. Uh, the life is all about the secret wishes. What do you find uh, as a secret wish for a restaurant here? To be mad about the food, to do whatever he or she likes, or to go with the standard time-tested thing and go with the standard operating procedures, the safe bit? Being a mad one, or a creative one, or a safe one, what do you prefer personally? Please be candid. So I, I love creativity in food, for sure. I love somebody that's going to push the envelope a little bit, that's going to do something a little bit different. To take risks. That, yeah, take risks, for sure. I, one, one theme that we had throughout this workshop was innovation. And that, that could be innovation in flavor profiles. It could be innovation in techniques that are being used. I love seeing different things because I love experiencing different things. I want different flavors. I want different methods. I want different textures. I want combinations that I've never had before. And so I love when a chef will take a risk. I love when a chef will create something new. Obviously, there are classics. There are things that have been around forever that people want. In Louisiana, we have dishes that like I don't want people to mess up. Our gumbos and our etouffees and our jambalayas and our boiled crawfish like I don't necessarily want people to mess that up I want the traditions and the culture to be there but I also want to look to new chefs to be creative in that space and to take risks and to use those same ingredients but cook them in a different way and bring that innovation so do I understand you want a restaurant to have two segments one with the classic time tested thing another with the chef to go mad and crazy and create new things some might click some might not click yeah. Do I understand I, something like that? I, well, so I think it doesn't have to be the same restaurant that's doing both of those things. I think there is a room for a restaurant that does the traditional food, and then there's room for another restaurant right next door to be the mad scientist, okay. to be the innovator, to do something different, because you have to differentiate yourself somewhere. And it, I, I'm currently working on opening restaurants in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm not opening traditional Louisiana restaurants. If I were to go somewhere else in the world or even somewhere else in America, maybe I would bring my traditional Louisiana flavors with me. But I'm opening a restaurant in Louisiana. I need to differentiate myself. And I think the same is true here. There are places to get the traditional dishes in Calcutta. If you're going to try to do something new and innovative, you, you got to bring a different flavor profile. You have to find some inspiration somewhere else to differentiate yourself from what's already there. A restaurant here should focus on the product or on the marketing, which percentage? Like, let's say within 100% of their time, where they should focus, That's true. Well, according to you. So, of a restaurant's time, they should probably focus 99% on the product and 1% on the marketing. Maybe, maybe 95 to 5. Um, but for the entrepreneur, for the owner, um, or for somebody on a marketing team, mm -hmm. it's very important, right? Um, I look at it with my business and my time, I'm probably spending the inverse of that. I mean, I'm, I'm here in India right now, my restaurant's running back in Louisiana. I have people in place for that. I probably spend closer to 90% of my time on marketing, on building the brand, on getting the word out, and, and about 10% of my time on the product itself. But I also have a team that is dedicated to the product itself so you so first their time getting spent on that is is probably 90 95 percent of the time of the, the restaurant as a whole so you first have to get the product stabilized yeah. get a good team and then go all out for the marketing is it something like that well so obviously it's very important to have the menu correct to have the product good to have everything there that you want it to get it stabilized as i think is a great way to go make sure that your standards are there that you can repeat it and it comes out the same over and over again. You have to have consistency. And then, once you have that down, then you can then you can turn your innovation over to the marketing side because you've already done the innovation on the food side. You have your menu set. You have your recipes developed. Now you can focus your creativity on the marketing side. In U.S., Americans are known to be great businessmen and uh, heading few of the largest business houses across the globe. Maybe let's say MACD, KFC. 
what will be your advice for the budding entrepreneurs or restauranteurs? Yeah, so those, those three suggestions maybe the, those sort of global restaurants that that came from America, the KFC. Because for somebody who wants to be big in the business, mm -hmm. they have a passion for food and they want to be big in the food business. What would be your suggestions, three pointers? Well, you have to keep that passion. You have to have the passion for what you do, and that has to be for the food, but it also has to be for the business. Because you're not going to grow a business to be what McDonald's is or what Subway is without having a passion for the business side. It's not just about making the burgers or making the sandwiches, it's about growing the business. Um, so you have to have that passion for both your food and growing your business. Um, it takes time. Time is a big factor there. You, it's going to take time, it's going to take money, it's going to take lots of business plans, it's going to take lots of investment. Um, so you have to be patient. You have to give it time to breathe. You have to get started and then figure out what the next growing steps are and take the next step. And then figure out what the growing steps are and take the next step. You can't rush it. It's not going to happen at once. McDonald's didn't have a billion served overnight. It took time. Um, and, and then third, you just can't give up. There's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be hurdles that you have to go through. There's going to be barriers as you're trying to grow. Uh, McDonald's, KFC, those sorts of organizations that started in America didn't open their second location in India. They, they opened their 8,000th location in India. It yeah. takes time, it takes patience, it takes money, uh, it takes the passion, but, but it also takes that entrepreneur mindset to not give up and to just fight through any of those barriers that present themselves. Jamie, it's a brilliant initiative in the part of uh, U.S. Consulate. Any other thing is in pipeline, or you are not? Uh, we are not. Uh, Beyond the lunch that we're about to go eat right now, ah, lovely. wrapping up today. Um, I wish I could say yes, but that's that's as far as I can take it. But, uh, Brilliant. Smiling. Uh, I think all the participants are happy. Um, I hope food guys happy. So I guess the lunch is waiting, so, and yeah. let's go hit it. All right, all right. let's do it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks. Yeah. Bye.